Hello and welcome to a day in 15 minutes UPSC prelims daily current affairs by NEO IAS. So today on 4th March 2020, our topics for discussion are Suposhit Ma Abhiyan, then Sukhana Lake, Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, Black Carbon, In-Flight Wi-Fi, then Crop Diversification Program. Okay, so moving to our first topic that is Suposhit Ma Abhiyan. So the news is that the Lok Sabha Speaker Shri Om Birla, he launched Suposhit Ma Abhiyan in Kota that is in Rajasthan. Okay, then so this Suposhit Ma Abhiyan actually it is a scheme and it is launched to help India achieve its target of malnutrition free India by 2022. Okay, so it mainly provides nutritional support to pregnant women and also to adolescent girls. Then this Suposhit Ma Abhiyan was launched to preserve the health of future generations. So, under this program, more than 1000 women are to be given food for one month. That is their criteria. That is uh, the health of the child, including medical examination, then what we can say blood test, medicine and even delivery would be covered under this. So, please remember that it is applicable only to one pregnant woman per family. And in the first phase of the cam uh, campaign, 1000 kids of 17 kg balanced diet it were provided to 1000 pregnant women. Okay, so 1000 kits of 17 kg balanced diet were provided to 1000 pregnant women. That, that was done in the first phase of the campaign. Uh, that is, it, uh, it includes millet flour, wheat, maize, then even jaggery, uh, groundnut, ghee, etc. Okay. So that's all. Moving to a second topic that is about Sukhana Lake. So the news is that Punjab Chief Minister promises to protect Sukhana Lake. So uh, you know it is located in Chandigarh and it is a reservoir at the food hills of uh, Himalayas. So that is in the Shivalik Hills. So here in the map you can see its location. So this lake it is home to several species of migratory birds like Siberian duck, then storks cranes, etc. And also Sukhana Wildlife Sanctuary is situated in the northeast of Sukhana Lake. And it was constructed in 1958. Okay. And this lake, it has been declared as a protected national wetland by the government of India. And a major threat to the Sukhana, it is the discharge of pollutants from the neighboring areas. Okay. So that's all. Uh, uh, next topic is about Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights. So the UN Rights Body to move Supreme Court on Citizenship Amendment Act. Okay, so this is the news headline. So first we have to know about Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights. The Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, it is the leading UN entity on human rights. And it is also known as UN Human Rights Office. And it is a department of the Secretariat of the United Nation that works to promote and even protect the human rights that are guaranteed under international law and stipulated in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights of 1948. Clear? So the office, it was established by the UN General Assembly in 1993 on the eve of 1993 World Conference on Human Rights. And the office, it is headed by the High Commissioner for Human Rights. So, he is the one who coordinates the human rights activities throughout the UN system and acts as the Secretariat of the Human Rights Council in Geneva, that is in Switzerland. Okay, so the General Assembly entrusted both the High Commissioner and her office with a unique mandate to promote and protect all human rights for all people. Clear? So next about Human Rights Council. So the Human Rights Council, you know, it's an intergovernmental body within the United Nations system that is responsible for strengthening the promotion and uh, protection of uh, human rights around the globe and for addressing situations of the human rights violation and also even they make recommendations on them. Clear? So it has the ability to discuss all the thematic 
human right issues and situations that require its attention throughout the year. So here you have to note that it meets at the UN office that is at Geneva. So the council it is made up of 47 United Nations member states which are elected by the UN General Assembly. And the members they are elected for a time period of 3 years. Okay, with a maximum of 2 consecutive terms. And the Human Rights Council replaced the former United Nations Commission on Human Rights. So here please note that the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, that is the OHCHR, it is often confused with HRC. Actually it is a separate institution which presents reports independent of the HRC. Okay, so now it's clear, right? Then, so our next topic is about black car carbon. The news is that its levels spike at the Himalayan glaciers. So the study says that the black carbon concentrations near the Gangotri glacier, it rose 400 times in summer due to forest fires, then stubble burning from agricultural wasters and that triggered the glacial melt. Okay. So, what are this black carbon? So, this black carbon, they are the result from incomplete combustion of fossil fuels and biomass. So, the thing is that the fine particles, they absorb light and about a million times more energy than carbon dioxide. So, it is said to be the second largest contributor to climate change after CO2. But unlike CO2, that is, you know, this carbon dioxide, it can stay in the atmosphere for years together. But whereas this black carbon, it is short-lived and it remains in the atmosphere only for days to weeks before it descends as rain or snow. And here you have to remember the concentration, it varied from a minimum of 0 0.01 microgram per cubic meter in winter to 4.62 microgram per cubic meter during summer. And India it is the second largest emitter of black, uh, black carbon in the world with emissions expected to increase dramatically in the upcoming decades with indo gangetic planes it is said to be the largest contributor. So this black carbon it absorbs solar energy and it warms the atmosphere and when it falls to earth with precipitation it darkens the surface of the snow and ice okay and also it results to reducing their albedo albedo means a reflecting power of a surface and also they leads to warming the snow and hastening its melting so this is its effect understand so our next topic is about in flight wi-fi so the news is that the government it has permitted airlines operating in india to provide in flight wi-fi services to passengers so, the pilot, he may permit the access of internet services by passengers on board and aircraft in flight through Wi-Fi on board. That is when laptop, smartphone, then smartwatch and even e-radar or a point of sale device, it is used in the flight mode or aeroplane mode. That is the thing. So, next you have to know how will in-flight Wi-Fi work. So, broadly this in-flight connectivity systems use two kinds of technologies. So, the first one, an onboard antenna, it picks up the signals from the nearest tower on the ground and unless the aircraft flying over a large space with no towers, that means such as water bodies, what happens? The connection, it will remain seamless up to a certain altitude. Okay, so, so that is the first condition. And otherwise, the satellites, it can be used to connect to ground station in the same way that satellite TV signals are transmitted. And then the data it is, it is transmitted to a personal electronic device through an onboard router which connects to the plane's antenna. Okay. And the antenna it then transmits the signals through uh, satellites to a ground station which redirects the traffic to a billing server that calculates the data consumption. Okay. And it is then relayed to an intercepting servers and to the world wide web. Okay. So, this is how it works. 
So once flight mode is activated, the plane's antenna it will link to terrestrial internet services provided by the telecom service providers. When the aircraft has climbed to 3000 meter, that is normally 4 to 5 minutes after the takeoff, what happens? The antenna it will switch to satellite based services. So this way there will no, there will not be any break in internet services to the passengers and cross interference between terrestrial and satellite networks it will be avoided. That is the advantage. So in general the Wi-Fi on a plane it is lower than on the ground. So even though this is changing with uh, this type of newer technologies. So um, that is the thing. Clear. So our next topic is about crop diversification program. So the news is that the information regarding crop diversification program it was given by the Union Minister of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare Sri Narendra Singh Tomar in Lok Sabha. So this crop diversification program actually it is a sub scheme of Rashtriya Krishi Vikas Yojana and it is being implemented in original green revolution states to divert the area of paddy crop to alternate and in tobacco growing states to encourage tobacco farmers to shift to alternate cropping pattern. Okay. So under this crop diversification program for replacing the paddy crop assistance is provided for four major interventions which are the first one is the alternate crop demonstration, second one is the farm mechanization and value addition and third one it is about site specific activities and fourth one contingency for awareness, training, monitoring etc. Okay. So however for replacing tobacco crop Tobacco growing states have been given flexibility to take suitable activities for growing alternative agriculture or even horticultural crops. And the government of India it also provides flexibility to states for state specific needs or priorities under this RKVY. So the state can promote crop diversification under RKVY with the approval of SLSC that is state level sanction committee which has been headed by the chief secretary of the state. Okay, so this is the functioning. So the last class I have given you two questions. So the first one is the happiness curriculum in schools it was implemented in. So you know the happiness curriculum in schools it was implemented over 1000 government schools in Delhi between nursery and class 8. Okay, so your answer here is Delhi that is A. And the next question it is about Vigyan Jodi scheme. It has been launched by which one of the following? So this scheme it is launched by the Department of Science and Technology. Okay. So your answer is B. Then today you have got two questions. So the first one is Kagra. It is a gravitational wave detector located in and your options A India, B Japan, C Nepal and D China. And the second question it is about Nandan Garan Zoological Park. It is located in A. Odisha, B. Assam, C. Kerala and D. Tamil Nadu. So please find the answer for these two questions and please comment in the comment section. So that's all for today guys. I hope you enjoyed the session and if you have any doubt, please comment in the comment section. Thank you so much. Like, share and subscribe to our channel for more videos. Follow our website neoiascap.com for the detailed content and monthly prelims digest. Also join our current affairs exclusive test series through the website and finally participate in the daily current affairs prelims infotainment queues at our telegram channel that is Neo IAS prelims at 9.30 pm every day. Thank you.